So I'm really excited because I'm off to see a local beekeeper today and I thought you might find it interesting if I take you with me. Now, uh, Marie Bell, she's here in Victoria on Vancouver Island in Canada, the uh, traditional territories of the Lekwungen speaking people, so the Songhees and the Esquimalt um, nations. And we're going to do some uh, some dousing and I'm going to catch up and some really cool um, research and kind of experiments that she's been doing. Now, um, uh, Marie is a graduate of my house healing program and she's also a graduate of my sound healing and also my crystal therapy uh, practitioner program and uh, what I love about what Marie is doing is she's kind of bringing all of those things together and she's applying it to her work as a beekeeper and I think it's absolutely fascinating and I'm hoping that you find that as interesting as I do which is why I wanted to bring you along now, Marie lost a couple of colonies last year um, due to uh, mites, I think it was. So it really took her on a bit of a journey of, you know, trying to understand how to how to keep the hives and the bees uh, healthy and happy so that that wouldn't happen again Um and so that led her to do some really uh, wonderful research around uh, geopathic stress and the impact that that has on bees, uh, the good impact that that has on bees, um, and uh, how to, you know, maybe put some things into place using sound, uh, crystals, uh, energy vibrations in order to, you know, keep the, the you know, the wonderful health of the hive going. So. Um, She's done a little bit of exper experimentation so far um, and uh, the all of the things that she's been doing have been taken away from the hive. So we're going to uh, douse the aura of the hive um, pre us putting the, um, the things in and then we're going to leave it for a little while. I'm going to douse the aura as well. And hopefully this is going to be, um, you know, the, the first of two, uh, two videos because, you know, we want to uh, look at um, this a little bit, uh, you know, in a, f in a few weeks, you know, particularly around um, honey yield. So we want to take kind of a ba baseline now, see what the hive is producing in terms of honey. And then, you know, in a couple of weeks, you know, a month maybe, look to see whether or not Marie's interventions are, you know, um, are yielding an increase. And, and, and also, you know, overall, how happy and well is the, um, are the colonies. So I am super uh, excited. So it's a stinking hot day. It's, um, it's well, probably uh, over 80 degrees all, uh, already. So... Um, it's going to be a hot one, but I hope that you enjoy this video. So, um, so here we go, guys. Here is my experiences of dousing beehives in Victoria, Canada. <laughs> Thank you for being my video star today. You're welcome. So, uh, tell me a little bit about you, Marie. How did you kind of get into beekeeping? Um, well, I started when uh, I was a kid my dad did bees so and my dad started me off doing bees and so was he a beekeeper yes he was a beekeeper so how old were you when you got kind of sucked into the lifestyle i don't even know actually my mum might know and so um did he was he into beekeeping because it was you know um he kind of farmed the land or what was you know what started him with beekeeping uh, I'm not sure what started him, um, but he he grew a lot of food, like did a lot of gardening. So maybe he just was looking for pollination. Cool. And um, so you come from a, you know, you've got a heritage. Yes. So you're second generation beekeeper. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. And you were also um, you also led a local kind of beekeeping chapter. Yes, um, so what restarted me into it was um, I was the, I was involved with 4-H and uh, one of the um, other leaders asked if we could do a beekeeping club and so um, I said sure. So that's when we started in with the bees. You got back into it. Yeah. And what is 4-H? 4-H uh, is 
like it's a it's huge it's all over Canada and the states all over the world actually um, it is a group of um, leaders and kids and they just learn about uh, things they like they teach kids all every aspect you can do any any um, course uh, like you know dogs or cooking or you know but it started on the prairies I think and it was um, to mostly to do with animals and a group for um, people like children who lived on farms to get together and do stuff yes. I, and I guess that's so important as more kids grow up in an urban you know environment to um, reconnect them to the land and reconnect them to animals and build that relationship I think is um, pretty pretty important these days oh yes very cool so um, you know we hear a lot in the news that um, you know bees are you know under threat and they're a diminishing population and it would have catastrophic um, implications if we lost bees from the natural world so what are, you know what are the threats to bees what's what's going on with them um, well a lot of threats are um, pesticide use um, and slowly that's being reduced but some places it's not um, and a real big threat is um, mites varroa mites that's really bad and um, some of them just die off in the winter and nobody knows why and there's also other disease that are like AFB that's American fowl brood you know there's lots of diseases that but having varroa mite um, causes them to be weaker and they get more susceptible to um, viruses and other um, other diseases. And so if a colony gets that mite, is it treatable or is that them doomed? Well, uh, you can treat it with uh, various different things. Um, you could treat it with formic acid and that's just one-time treatment and then so it gets into the cells of the brood and like it can get through um, but there's also oxalic acid uh, which is like vaporizing them like you put some crystals in a little um, metal stick that you stick into the hive so, and then right it, so there is an intervention yes that can happen I guess the the, the tough thing is realizing that there is a mite infestation in time to save the colony. Yes, and you need to do that. Um, it doesn't, the oxalic acid does not penetrate the wax cell. So you have to pretty much do it like every four days. Like uh, they cap the cells on every third day, but it's kind of hard on the bees. Um, and right. it's really bad, so you have to like wear a mask, and uh, it's really bad for people and animals. And the bees just get annoyed right. mostly. Yeah. So. And so, and there's no way of preventing those those mites. There's nothing preventative that you know of. Um, well, this is the whole thing that uh, I've tried to um, recreate. Um, a, a man named John Harding wrote a book. Um, he was a douser and a beekeeper, and he wrote a book. Um, and it was like how to um, have a varroa mite free mm. colony. So. so you were inspired by his original uh, research. So yes. Tell us a little bit about his research. Well, what he found is uh, you could put like when bees were located on high geopathic stress uh, they would be mite free um, but he found that uh, swarms like would be living on top of um, geopathic stress high geopathic stress so he uh, he would douse where to locate the hives and when he would go out to other people's yards he would you know see where the best place the high geopathic stress to put them on and so um, if you were going to sum up geopathic stress what would that 
what would that be in your your words um well geopathic stress comes from um just uh energy lines under the ground and also water lines um like crossing over like it's like a natural phenomenon so it's you know like it's a, a distortion in the earth's natural electromagnetic field caused by those you know as you say earth en energy lines and uh, underground water lines um so well thanks for that so this has kind of inspired you to um really try and create a, a, as a healthy environment as you can for your your own hives which are wonderfully um, profiled in the background there and the bees are doing their their stuff so tell us a little bit more about the research and the work that you're doing um i have really nowhere in this yard where they can go except for in the garden and it, there's it's not high geopathic stress in the garden and um how like how you could tell it's geopathic, like high geopathic stress is um, bees and cats like it. So wherever your cats sleep, that's basically detrimental to people. And uh, a friend of mine has located his beehive on the um, energy that's detrimental to us and their cat sleeps in the same spot with their beehive. So which is very interesting. So uh, I've researched and I found um, this book but called The Beehive Effect and it's written by uh, Valerie Solheim. And we'll put some links to, um, was, was it John? John Harding. John Harding yep. and we'll put links to um, this book and the research that she's been doing as well in the, um, in the description below. Okay, perfect. And so what she found like if you have a healthy hive and you record the sounds of it and then play it for another hive, it, it's like entrainment. So if you hit a tuning fork and put another tuning fork next to it, they will both be going at the same time. And so following that, if you, um, have a healthy hive and she went all the way to Hawaii and this is a woman who knows nothing about technology at all so if you read the book it's it's really entertaining so she just um, very she was very intuitive and she just made this happen and things just came fell in place for her isn't that the isn't that the way that, yes uh, synchronicity and your path just unfolds in front of you when you're really inspired and yes. you're on the right path and that that's totally what happened to her yeah. so she um she ended up in hawaii and she recorded the sounds of a hive and because it was in hawaii they um they're they're kind of isolated so there are no diseases there and she recorded the sounds and then she burnt a cd from it and so i downloaded that CD from her website and I burnt my own CD and um, so now we need to get the, the sound from the CD to the hive. So what I first did is I put a quartz crystal on it and um, put it under my hive, like had to put it in a container to make sure it's weather protected and uh, before I did that I doused the aura of my hot both hives they were smaller back then and so I doused the aura how far away it was and um, then I put this underneath the um, wood structure that the they're located on and then I just doused it again and um, it already was changing so I just kept coming back and dousing it and uh, it just kept getting bigger so it seems like the quartz crystal was transmitting the, f the sound on the CD to the bees. You're also doing some um, uh, research and experimentation with a starburst. So can you tell me about the starburst? Yes. Um, so what she did is she found, uh, she discovered Slim Sperling and Bill Reed. 
and they were making um, harmonizers so that would um, take the frequency of her CD and just pass it around to the, all the environment and so um, they created they created tools for her like energy transfer tools and so she started with those and then she eventually ended up going to the starburst so um, what I did is I went to our local um, shop where uh, there's a girl named Carrie at West Coast Creative Spirits and she um, I showed her all of this information and I also uh, researched and discovered um, Twisted Sage. So Twisted Sage has also been making these tools and um, they have like specific energies and frequencies to them and they like harmonize the area around them. So I um, asked her if she could make one of these and uh, she did. She recreated a couple different versions of the Starburst. And so I, when I took them out and put them on, I had my CD with like the sound side up with the crystal on it. And then I put the Starburst right on top of the container and uh, immediately the aura of the beehives just got further and further out. Fantastic. So. And so the, the, uh, the relationship is when the auric field of the beehive is healthy and buoyant and expansive, then um, it, you know, it makes sense that the health of the colony is, is well and, and buoyant as well. Yes. And actually, uh, I have gone in there a couple of times and have been really shocked. There's no queen cells, like so, and they've been like, the queen is laying the brood pattern out and the bees are putting honey and they are filling up the empty cells with honey. And so normally the colony would swarm in that case, because there's just, there's no more room for the queen to lay eggs. So, and it's called um, honey bound. So in that case, you know they'll do some put up some queen cells and then just swarm and take off so beekeepers need to check their hives quite regularly to prevent that like to give them more yeah. space to lay eggs and i've noticed too that um that both these hives are producing a significant amount of honey like more than i would have expected uh and it's said that if they're on high geopathic stress they'll produce 30% more, they'll be mite resistant. Um, and I don't, I can't, um, I can't honestly say if it's producing 30% more because I don't have anything to compare it to. Right. But these are, um, these started out a 10 frame nuke and a five frame nuke. And the 10 frame nuke, I just pulled nine solid frames of honey off of that about a week ago and the smaller one one frame solidly capped but and the smaller the smaller ones working on more cap frames of honey so it sounds like there's a lot of busy work the bees are doing yes in yes healthy, in their healthy state so what are we doing here today so um, today we're going to douse the aura of the two hives. I've taken all of the um, harmonizing stuff completely away, um, but I have noticed that I have doused uh, since the stuff's been taken away and it's continuing to have an effect on them. So um, like the aura, um, but also they've gotten bigger. So their aura might be bigger because of the size of them and the amount of right. bees, um, but I don't think so. I think it's um, because of the harmonizer stuff. So we're going to douse the aura, um, show you that process, and then you're going to pop the um, harmonizers back in yep. and just keep kind of, you know, measuring. And you've also got, you know, your, your baseline honey production as well. So you can look to see over time 
whether the yield is increasing uh, or not, which I think is really cool. So we will be able to check back in with Marie mm -hmm. and um, see how the see how the grand experiment is going. Um, so this is the Starburst, one of the designs by Carrie at West Coast Creative Spirits. And this is the one that we're going to be putting in. And, and the CD. And then uh, just put this crystal on. And the crystal. So uh, Marie has been trained by me in crystal therapy and knows that um, I believe that crystals are sentient beings. So we'll have asked that crystal whether or not it wants to partner with Marie in this endeavor. Um, so it's always good when we get crystals aligned to our magical intentions. So here we go. So I'm just going to place this whole setup um, right under here. And while Marie's doing that, this is the lovely Hunter, who's been a little companion today. You can see it. So there it is, in situ. So here are the wonderful hives. See. I don't know if you can see the bees nice and busy. And so Marie's going to um, douse the aura of this small hive uh, first. So she's going to be asking to be shown the outer edge of the aura of this hive. So it looks like it's 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 about that size. So that's a good too. that's a good measure to see the difference. So, and uh, two days ago, it was about here. So that's um, with the um, starburst taken out. So what we're do going to do today is just measure, get a baseline now, put the starburst in, and then an hour or so after, we're going to see if there's any measured difference. Okay, I'll do this big hive. Now. Yep. It's like the same as the other one. Yeah. Okay. So from your research so far, it's definitely made a difference. Yeah. We're going to measure the energy of the hives now. And this is with the Bovis Biometer. And then we'll also measure it again um, once we've had a cup of tea. So I'm just asking the pendulum to show me the, uh, the energy of the hive. And so it's it's moving to around 6,500. So in the physical realm, which is really good for, you know, it's, it's a good, healthy, uh, uh, you know, a good, healthy number. Um, so that's the Bovis uh, Biometer. It's a version of that. And we got it to uh, to about there. So six, five. So let's see when we come back um, after an hour. Uh, if that's moved any. So, so what we're going to do now is go in for a nice cup of tea. As you can see, it's absolutely roasting hot here. It's, I don't know, it's just before noon. And so we're going to have a nice bit of refreshment and then we're going to come back and measure the hives. So uh, see you in a few. So here we are, we are back out after being refreshed and a bit of a break from the sun. And um, Marie is going to now uh, douse 
the aura of the hives again. So I reckon that the devices have been in for maybe about an hour and 15 minutes, something like that, uh, maybe a little bit longer. So let's see how different they are. So it's definitely bigger at the back there. Yeah, this is just weird. Oh well, yeah, let's go in. Wow. Pretty incredible. Eh? It is incredible. Still going. It's nice that my um, vegetables. Are yeah, they're getting the benefits as well. And it's still going. So it's going, it's, it's extending beyond the confines of the, uh, the enclosure there. So, I mean, that's like, I don't know, trebled, quadrupled, maybe it's significant. Mm -hmm. And that's just like an hour and 15, hour and a half, something like that. Okay. Moment of truth. So we're going to ask just what the frequency of the hives are. And it's going well, certainly into the energy portion of the scale around 1300. Uh, yeah, no, 13,000. So here. So that's where it's doused now. So it was, it was here, 6.5, and it's now 13. So from an energetic perspective, it's increased. It was doubled, basically. Doubled, and that's an hour and 20 minutes, an hour and a half, something like, like that, which is quite significant. So here we are. We have finished our uh, our experiment for now, although there's more um, there's more research to be done and more measuring um, to happen as well. So I want to say thank you to Marie. I'm going to say goodbye to the vlog. Bye. <laughs> That it? <laughs> I'm so excited to be part of this um, grand experiment. So thanks to Marie for inviting me along for a little bit of dousing fun. And I've learned an awful lot about bees. And I think our final shot is going to be those wonderful, um, those wonderful beings. Uh, beings, you saw what I did there, didn't you? Yes. <laughs>